Hello and welcome to another episode of The Han on Fire, brought to you by Firewise Learning Academy. I'm your host, Tim Davis. The Han on Fire is a podcast and YouTube channel featuring education, commentary, and conversation with world-renowned fire forensic scientist, Dr. John DeHaan. If you have any questions for Dr. DeHaan, please email them to questions at thehaanonfire.com. A key resource and guide for fire investigators is NFPA 921. This week I asked Dr. DeHaan, what is NFPA 921? DeHaan on Fire contains discussion and video not suitable for all audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Dr. DeHaan, what is NFPA 921 and what is its origin? NFPA 921 is a publication of the National Fire Protection Association and its official title is Guide to Fire and Explosion Investigations. It was created in the late 1980s as a way of improving the professional uh, performance of fire investigators, whether those investigators were with public agencies or private sector uh, companies. And um, the, 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 fire invest, the fire community in itself had realized there were some problems with the reliability of fire investigations and some conflicts. And as a result, uh, NFPA uh, put together a technical committee with a wide cross-section of, of experts from all related uh, involved aspects and uh, ask them to formulate a guide uh, for the proper investigation from documentation and examination and, and uh, uh, data collection and interviews and things like that, as well as physical uh, evidence analysis to come up with a, a, a much more reliable format for um, uh, investigations, both in the civil and criminal arenas. And you played an early role in NFPA 921, didn't you? Well, by kind of an accident, I ended up invited in the very early days, 1990, thereabouts, um, during the preparation of even the first, uh, first um, edition of it, that um, NFP committee invited me to take part uh, as a member of the technical committee responsible for that uh, publication. One of my colleagues... Actually, one of the guys from the state fire marshal's office was an original appointee to the technical committee. And he made copies of the very introductory document and it was not supposed to be circulated. Well, one of his guys sent me a copy and says, NFPA is thinking about this, what do you think? And I, I filed a whole bunch of complaints and that's when I got the call from the, the chairman, the then chairman, he said, well, A, you weren't supposed to see that, but B, now that you have, you can be part of the solution. <laughs> <laughs> so show up at the next meeting. And so I was thrown in. I got to know a lot of the other scientists and engineers and a couple of investigators uh, and one or two uh, lawyers um, that formed that committee. And uh, it was a very interactive group, very active, uh, lots of professional knowledge and uh, attitudes about you know, the right way to do things. And the interesting thing is that, well, as it turned out, the, the first edition uh, generated a lot of complaints from uh, readers back to the NFPA about, well, why is your, why is your language so negative? And we, we saw these comments and thought, well, and NFPA actually wrote us and said, hey, next time, next edition, let's be a little more positive and a lot less critical of the existing methods. And we thought, well, why is that coming out? Well, it turns out that we were really concerned on correcting bad behavior or poor interpretations and things like that, bad practices. And so a lot of our guidelines were prefaced by saying, it is a common misconception that such happens, or this is how it's interpreted or misinterpreted as it can be. And, uh, <clears throat> So we were cautioned to not use that term uh, at all, if possible, but uh, that we that we were, you know, free to create good, positive guidelines on the uh, uh, <clears throat> on what we did want to convey. So um, I was on that committee for uh, nine or ten fun-filled years, which involves a lot of a lot of work, writing materials, 
and then they all go out for peer review and multiple meetings and, and analytical sessions and things like that. And then it's voted in by or out by the NFPA uh, general committee. And, uh, and I was part of, I think, uh, five or six editions uh, various times. But that was, that was the formation of it. So we, we, on the NFPA 921 committee, we created kind of a flow chart of, you know, what to do, the steps to do. But the most important thing of a scientific method um, that we, we, we realized early on we had to include was a feedback loop or a series of feedback loops such that you, you gather the information, the interviews, the scenes, the lab analysis, whatever might be necessary, and then you, you formulate an opinion or a conclusion. And then you have to test that conclusion and see, and the critical thing is, to do it properly, you have to actually create contrary opinions and see if there's any support uh, in your documentation for these uh, opposing opinions. And if there is, you got to address this conflict. And, and especially in, in, well, in any kind of investigation, whether it's civil or criminal, you got to make sure that there isn't an alternative explanation that is easily, you know, easily applicable to your, to your data. And that's the, that's the tricky part is getting people to reach an instant conclusion, which is they're tempted to do, you know, standing at the scene and then go force them to go back and see, is there an alternate conclusion? When it was first published in 1992, the, the NFP 921 methods for uh, investigation of fires and explosions uh, was so, so disliked by the professional fire investigation community that they actually got the primary international, the primary professional association, the International Association of Arson Investigators, actually file a um, amicus brief with the court challenging the, the methods that we were describing and saying this isn't how fire investigations work and who are these people that you know tell us how to do this job and luckily they they were eventually convinced to withdraw their uh, opposition but it took uh, it probably took 20 years or at least 15 years for the majority of fire investigators in the, in the you know, working population uh, to finally accept 921. And that was largely because a lot of courts held, hey, this is the, this is the method that's recognized by your primary uh, professional organizations and you better be following it. And if you can be challenged on any one of these things, then yeah, maybe we better take a second look at your opinion. And that's caused a lot of grief. I know I've been cross-examined a lot on, on 921 and, you know, and you say, well, and they say, well, you know, are you familiar with this document? You go, yeah, I am. I'm on the, I'm on the panel the first 10 years. Oh, and then they, they figure, well, you know, why did you get it wrong? <laughs> it's the next, is the next inquiry. But I think overall uh, it's been a, a suitable working standard to improve fire investigation for um, the majority of fire investigators. I think, you know, looking back, I've, I've done some case reviews for fire marshals, looking at what their work product was, say, 10 years ago, and then comparing it to what their reports and their, their uh, yeah, their, their reports are um, currently, and you see a significant improvement in the documentation and the, and the formulation of what if uh, hypotheses and the testing of those alternatives. And so it's much more uh, uh, consistent with the scientific method, but it's also better for the, for the legal process to say, yeah, we have a reasonable basis for believing what this investigator is telling us because they have met those challenges. Thanks for watching another episode of The Han on Fire brought to you by Firewise Learning Academy. If you have any questions for Dr. DeHaan, please email them to questions at the Han on Fire. And if you haven't subscribed to the if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Ring the bell to get notifications of new uploads to the channel, and don't forget to set your devices to receive those updates. For now, signing off for Firewise Learning Academy and Dahan on Fire, I'm your host, Tim Davis. See you next time.